So this is a pretty cool command. It does require a little extra configuration as we saw here. Let me pause. I'm going to go ahead and reload all the um, auto secure config here. Actually, <laughs> I kind of lost track here. I didn't need to do that because we were back to the running config that we were at before. So let me see. Let's just make sure that there is a difference between the startup and the running config, and there is. And what we'll do here is we will reissue that command that we had with the time, and I will show you how to go ahead and accept the changes. And we wait and wait. I should have some jokes lined up for this. Actually, my networking skills are probably joke enough for you guys. Let's go ahead, and we will wait for it to go through its initial pass. Okay, so it's gone ahead and it has replaced the running configuration with the startup configuration. Let's go ahead and verify that real quick. We should see no differences and there aren't. So now if we want to accept the changes, we have this configuration confirm command. If we issue this command within the time, which is two minutes, there you go. It doesn't do much. It doesn't, there's no, hey, yes, you've accepted the configuration. It doesn't really even log anything, I don't believe. Yeah. All that logging is just from the configuration replace. So there's not a lot of fireworks with that, but what you've done now is you've committed yourself to the configuration replacement, which means we're back to our starting configuration. So this is a pretty cool command. I, I would suggest using this simply because it gives you another layer of safety, another safety net, if you will. Um, the one caveat, of course, is that you will have to configure archive configuration on there that's not that hard to do and the biggest problem with that is making sure that you have a, a um, file source that has room for your configuration usually that's not a problem but if you've got big configs or if you got you know an old school router that doesn't have a lot of memory available then that could be a problem one thing I did want to show you real quick is if your startup configuration does not have archive configuration configured a lot of configuration words in the same sentence. <laughs> Anyways, so archive. So now we replace the running configuration with the startup configuration, and archive feature is not enabled. So if we wanted to use that time feature again for the replacement, we would have to go ahead and configure archive configuration once again. Hope that made sense. Okay, one last thing I want to do is I want to show you the configuration lock feature. I'm on R2. I'm actually going to telnet over to R1. And so now I've got two connections to R1. I've got Packet Lab, which is connected via Telnet, and then I'm also on the console port here. So what I'm going to do, as soon as this stops thinking, I'm going to pause the video real quick. What I'm going to do is load up auto secure commands so that we have a difference between the running and the startup configuration. Okay, so now I'm going to pop over to the console line here. There you go. So we've got a vast difference between our startup and our running configuration. So if you issue the show configuration lock, you will see that at this moment, what you're looking for here basically is state, and it's free. So it's not locked. And what this is, is this is a feature that iOS implements when the configuration replacement is occurring. So it happens with uh, configuration archive. And it's actually a pretty cool feature. What it's doing is it's saying, I'm going to lock the running configuration so nobody can make alterations to it while I'm doing these operations. Because you don't want to have some other engineer in there changing the configuration when you're doing a configuration replacement. It can really bone it up. Um, so it'll it'll apply this lock. So we're going to go over to R2, and we're going to issue figure replace VRAM startup, and hit enter. And as soon as we hit yes here, as soon as we hit enter after typing Y, again we'll see here that this is not locked yet. That's the reason I have two connections to R1. Hit yes, and we'll jump over here. Oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> we go reissue the command. Come on. No. What happened? Damn it. And you can see I just missed it. Oh, the best laid plans. All right. I'm prepping my show configuration lock command. Um, if we issue it here, of course, we see that it is not locked. But what happens is when you're doing a configuration replacement, it's pretty CPU intensive. And so you want to have this, in this case, set up in advance. A, because I don't type that well when under pressure, because I'm only going to have like, what, 5, 10, 20 seconds to issue this. And the other thing is because the CPU gets spiked up, 
it has trouble taking this command sometimes. So let's hope that this works out. And we're on our R2 connection, R1. Let's go ahead and do this. I'll hit enter here and then pop over to R1. Enter, R1, hit enter. And that's exactly what we want to see. Let me see if I can get into configuration T mode. You can see I'm typing is not taking it. Yeah, you fucker. All right, so that is that is the thing. You might know. There we go. It let me in. I wanted to try and get into comp T mode. It should have stopped me from doing that. But it was it had such a load on its CPU at that point that it, it effectively had locked me out simply because it wouldn't free up CPU cycles in order to allow me to do that. Oh, well, we got the information that we wanted. And we can see here the differences. Up here is the configuration lock output when there was no configuration lock. So again, free is what we're looking for, that state. Down here, you can see that state is locked. And it tells you what it's doing. It's a rollback. Um, there's some additional information there. The cool bits are that it will tell you, in this case, because it was a remote IP address that was issuing the command, this is R2, that was our connection from R2 to R1. It says, you know, you got a little additional information here that says it's this device's IP address, and you also have the user. If you did this from the console on, you wouldn't see this because you're, now well, it depends if you're logged in or not, but you wouldn't see the remote IP address. This is interesting, if you remember back to the theory portion, I couldn't remember if I had issued the time command with this, but it looks like, in this case I didn't. We saw that this was just a, a basic configure replace. It has a lock active time a second, so at this point it had been active for two seconds, and it looks like what this is, is this is just a safety net, that if after 600 seconds, which is 10 minutes, I could do math. Um, it's going to go ahead and unlock it anyway. So that's that's nice. It, it's another feature so that you don't end up with a locked out configuration. I just wanted to show that to you. So that's the configuration replacement feature. It's an excellent feature. It's very good for lab rats. I didn't go into that. I'd, we've gone pretty long anyways. What you could do is you can set up, like say in your flash file, you can set up uh, different configurations for different lab scenarios. And if you're using like the same topology but just different configurations, instead of having to delete your configuration, reload, load a new one, you know, if you've got multiple routers for CCIE lab, that might be, you know, 10 devices, you can just go ahead and do a configure replacement and it's done in a snap. So that's it. As always, I hope this is beneficial and I hope to see you in the packet lab again soon. Thank you.